Okay, so we're back here. Now, this is going to be a really short follow up video for the last one. So, I got Alex to actually fix the model. It's actually been fixed. We're going to get it loaded in just to check that out here in a bit. But, you know how I couldn't figure out how where the rest of the model pieces were? He explained that to me as well. So, I'm, I'm a complete Blender noob. I know nothing about this software. In all honesty, I probably should sit down, go through the manual, and try to learn as much as I can, even if I don't plan to do a lot of the modeling myself. Um, so how you do it is down here there's this little grid of dots you can click and this is how you go through your scenes. So what he did is this is really brilliant of him. He broke all the models down the scene. This is the reason why we saw duplicates of everything. Is he sitting here using these for uh, testing of the texture? And that's the reason why we have several different things working with. So here's our segmented pieces that are going to be used for crafting. And here's a lot of other ones where he's testing the textures on. Now one thing I did notice is I don't think we have a missile skin per se, but that's okay. I mean, honestly, I, the whole segmented missile skin thing is a little tedious for model developers in the first place. Just doing something like this where you can click these and uh, move these around, that by itself has got to take a while to do. Um, I mean, the original plan when we were trying to design... Uh, models what I was trying to get Morton to do is make each one of these rods individualized so when you were building your missile you would have watched each rod be put on and I still kind of want to do that um, but I may do that myself I may not ask a modular developer to do that because that's just maybe a couple of bottles of rum and like four long nights of just doing that um, so we do have our sections here so this is our engine section so here's our actual engine and this is a redstone engine. This is actually modeled from the Wiki from what he was telling me. So this is exactly what it actually looks like. Um, so he did a pretty good job here. Uh, and then we got our fuel tanks. Uh, I'm going to assume that one of the, this lower one is the oxidizer and this top one is the actual fuel. I'm not exactly familiar with the engine. I do know a lot of the ICBMs and stuff that are used by the military used like, I want to say kerosene or something. Um, no, that doesn't feel right. I'm going to have to go look it up. I know it was an oxidizer fuel mix because you, when you build a rocket, you design them to run without oxygen. and Because I think they're just flat out kept in an unoxygen environment when they're stored in silos. Uh, upon other things. Now here's our warhead section. Now this is our warhead and guidance. And of course you have each one of these as missile segmented as well. Uh, I believe the same thing with the fuel tank frame here is that each one of these is segmented. So as you're building this, you'll build each layer up uh, one at a time. Uh, more than likely, most of you will use robotic equipment to build these because this is going to just flat out take a while. Um, not only is it going to be resource intensive to build this, I am probably just going to put a flat out time modifier on the crafting cycle for this. And that will be used via robotic arm, so you just have to wait on the robotic arm to do the job. Uh, there will be welding involved, in, and you can build these by hand, of course, so I'm not going to remove that possibility in case you guys want to build it by hand yourself. And, and additionally, we do plan to build the Artelex mods, so yeah, you, you're going to want to build these by hand anyways. Um, so here's several different sections for our guidance. Um, and then our warheads at the very top here. At least I think it's the word. I uh, I feel like I'm going to have to do some research on exactly how this stuff works. Uh, what do we got here? I know one of these is detachable. Here's our cone. Yeah, so that's our crush cone at the top, and here's our actual warhead section. And in all honesty, this would actually have components inside of here. And what you would see inside here is like pretty much um, a beach ball size explosive with a whole bunch of wires on it and stuff. This will, by the way, uh, support nuclear uh, ordnance, so it will be the first one to do nukes. Uh, they will be very low yield, so think uh, Hiroshima, but maybe slightly smaller. Uh, after all, the uh, the one we dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, those two guys were huge compared to this redstone. Um, so this is a this is model of the redstone like we did in the last video. Um, so this will probably be pretty low. I'm not exactly sure what exactly we're going to to do ordnance size. I'm more than likely going to go through all of the. Um, explosives again and I'm going to reclassify all of them because we now actually have a big enough missile that that needs to be done anyways reverse all this so that's that's that right there so I'm going to go ahead and close this uh without saving I'm going to reopen it again just so I can export the model um so the only thing I want to do is I want to export this model here so hit control z so I don't mess up the alignment and we want to go file export object file system uh, we want to make sure we turn triangular faces on, and then we want to only export what we're uh, connected to. As after all, I'm going to use 
uh, a couple different model files for this. Um, we can export these all as one model, but because of this layer system he's got going on here, uh, I do not want to just export everything because then you'll have a lot of extra sections sitting here. Although it's really cool to sit here and go through and look at like, I mean, look at the cool textures we got here. I need to figure out where the uh, where the test texture is because I need to go make sure that's thrown into the folder. Anyways, we have exported that, so we hit close here. And I just need to rename these guys. So let's go ahead and copy the name here, delete these two files, and then we're going to rename these guys, and we just want to drag and drop them into the folder. We don't have to do anything else. Uh, for those guys who make resource packs and stuff, you want to change these models and textures, same same process. Um, so you just want to make sure you copy whatever you want to do, and you put it in exactly the same location that it would normally be in. Uh, for resource packs, of course, you're going to have it in a separate folder, but it, follow the path at least. Um, Speaking of resource packs, I still haven't tested to see if you can do JSON overrides of the resource packs yet. Uh, there's high likelihood that I'm going to have to work on that. Anyways, I'll go assets here, ICBM, and then models. And then that would be missiles, and we'll just drop it here. Replace in destination, so this should be updated. And all we got to do is just go ahead and launch it. Now, I did end up testing with that... that uh, cool face uh, thing. It did not make any difference. So let me go ahead over here and uh, just get rid of it. And uh, I shouldn't have to reload because it hasn't even finished compiling yet. <clears throat> there it goes. It's launching. Speaking of which, I need to take a look at the edit config. So I noticed, yeah, we're just running flat ICBM now. Um, we're not even running the J unit test. That explains why uh, here yesterday I was working on the Armory mod and I actually left out some uh, test cases. Although I need to go back through and I need to work on the lower mechanic for um, for all the weapons and stuff because I think I need to make it optional and then I th more than likely need to make it so it only works on human player characters. Uh, the reasoning behind this is that the sentry guns use the same exact code as the player weapons use and I think I broke them in the last patch. And I need to go ahead and uh, take some time to maybe look at that here later today. I also need to work on the uh, anti-ballistic missiles in ICBM Classic. I've been told they don't work anymore. Uh, that was predictable because we haven't tested them at all. Uh, the radar systems do work now, so I want to say we can go ahead and make them function. I am going to have to toy with them. I do need to go do a little bit of research on how the old mod worked because we are missing some content. Uh, particularly somebody was asking what the frequency did in the radar tower. Now I was under the assumption that had to do something with the jamming capability. Um, I think I'm actually wrong on that. I think it has to do with the anti-ballistic system. I could explain why it's not working. Anyways, this is loading up and it is done. So we'll go ahead and pop in here and I guess uh, to save a bit of time here we'll go ahead and test this and see as we're done testing to see if the model renders we'll pop real quick and just do the test the anti-ballistics. I'm not going to actually fix them in this video but we can just go ahead and confirm that they're broken. But it looks like yeah he did fix these. Um, so what he had to do is I think he said he hit N to show the normals and he then just fixed it. So yeah that looks really nice now and it looks beautiful. Now we're going to have to do uh, a lot of work to get this finished and stuff. Uh, I am going to have to add a crane and assembly line because I want to make these buildable by crane. Uh, until I get that done, I will just allow hand crafting on them. Um, that will give us a, a good crafting recipe start. Because how I want these to be built is you'll build them in sections. You'll move this section via crane onto wherever you're building them at. You'll then build three different sections. So you'll have the engine section, the fuel tank section, and the warhead section, which is at the top. And then you'll crane those all over and you'll bolt them together. And then when you're done, then you can bring it over to the silo. So there's a lot of work I want to do. But just like the standard missile, as I've noted before, you can just craft them on the launcher until I'm done with all the mechanical stuff. Because the standard missile is meant to be the same way. You're supposed to craft it in two sections and bolt those together when you're done. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and test the anti-ballistic missile system. And we'll go ahead and take uh, a look at that. So let's see. Now that would be ICBM Classic sits down here. This mod actually just needs a lot of work flat out. Uh, let's see. And yeah, my brother just ninja in my room and I think stole my money. <laughs> uh, taking advantage of the fact that I'm recording. Anyway, so we got anti ballistic. So anti ballistic apparently can be launched from the tier two one, but we're gonna go ahead and use the tier three. I really need to come through here and I need to work on. The rendering for these launchers. Uh, when I flip them over to JSON, they'll probably just fix themselves. The JSON render system works really well. 
Okay, so these need electricity, so we're gonna go and do we have? You know, that's a that is a big hindrance point by itself. Is that I didn't turn on a power mod, uh, and I don't think I have. Do I have industrial craft in here? I do have industrial craft, so let's go ahead and see if I can just do this. Now, industrial craft stuff might power. No, it's probably not going to. Yeah, it just flat. It probably won't work. Um, we're gonna try anyways. MFSU. So I think I just place this like that. You're powered. You're not giving any power. Uh, so yeah, this won't work. Um, I need to get IC2 support working. So that's a really big hindrance point here. Anyways, I can fix this real quick by just exiting out and just fixing the fact that I don't have a power system. It's a big uh, oversight of mine when I was working on the. Uh, clearing this out that I forgot to throw another mod in here. So the mod we need is power and wires and that's going to be our power mod. I'll probably throw a basic industries in here later for generators. And I'm out of water too. Yeah this was an unplanned dev video altogether. I was just sitting here after being explained uh, uh, how the blender system worked. I figured hey let's make a video real quick and I could show off all the model components. Uh, over the next couple weeks we'll get that working on but I still do have to focus on bug reports more than I do have to focus on more content so we'll get it in there we'll get it rendering um, I'll focus on getting yeah what we'll do is we'll spend some time just working on the decorative missile pads real quick and we'll implement all of the missiles via that system and that'll allow you to see the skeletal views of all the missiles unpainted painted we can then use that to test all the textures because we do have multiple textures to work with uh, including that on the fact he actually gave me uh, how I noted we were missing a, t a vanilla texture that matched all the rest of the ICBM textures. Uh, he went ahead and got me that as well. So he's, man, he's right on cue for all this stuff. I, I give him applause. So if we go in here, we do actually have uh, the texture that matches everything else. Probably need to work on the noise a little bit, but I think it's fine. Uh, I'll end up testing that here later. Um, yeah, I would say I could just go te check it right now, but I can't really modify. We're too late in the load state to modify anything. Because if you are before pre-init when Minecraft is running, you can actually still modify the JSON data. As soon as you get out of pre-init, then it's already loaded and it's already initialized. And then, of course, you can't uh, reload any of the JSON stuff because it'll give you an access denied. Um, that could be my fault, though. I wonder if I'm dumping the streams properly. Because when you load files, you open up a stream and then you load little bits in with it and then you're supposed to dump it. I need to go check to see if it is actually dumping the stream when it's done. Would be weird. Would be a big flaw actually too. I definitely need to work on that. Okay, so we got a power and wire mod and of course we got our little cubes in here and stuff. So we can put this here and of course this defaults to export all directions. Uh, the uh, final version will end up not actually being that way, but that's just how I've got it set up. Um, I accidentally set, did not set that infinite. There we go. So this is uh, powered up. Now, I'm going to say the frequency is actually involved, so we're going to do that. And then, um, I'm not sure how this thing works. So this is something we may have to go do some research real quick. Now, I know the missile itself auto-finds and auto-destroys missiles. Uh, so we are going to need a separate another launch pad. And then I'm going to need a radar. I think this does work with a radar system. So it's going to be 10 for that. Actually, you know, let's just do it this way. That way, if I need to do redstone for it, I can easily do redstone. So that's set up. Uh, then we're going to want to do another launcher over here. And then, um, yeah, I'll just do it that way. And then I need... I don't have a similar line here either. Oh, well, we'll just have to manually feed it missiles. More planning is definitely required. Okay, so we're going to target that rock right there, which should definitely be within range. Program the data in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a first initial f start with this. I want to say I could just do a button. Okay, I can't do it, but uh, there is some weird mechanics with the uh, launchers I still need to work on. There's a delay on fire. 
Oh, that's right, you don't have power. Uh, let's fix that. That's why the button probably actually didn't work. So there, once again, I iterate, there is a, some weird logic with behind the thing. There's a delay on redstone detection, so we will not fire instantly when it receives that redstone. So redstone pulsing does not work. It actually is a 10 tick at delay, I believe. It's not 10 ticks after you click it, it's 10 ticks is how often it checks redstone. Okay, so we didn't get a fire on that. And I wonder if we even got a detection. So we'll go over here and we're going to fire this again. And then quickly come over here. Yeah, so it does detect it. I need to do a zoom thing here because you can see it's just flying right over top of us and we don't really get a lot of indication of it flying. Um, so I want to say this is triggered via redstone. So we'll go ahead and do this. Put a couple of these just so I can make sure it, it uh, is functioning. And then we're just going to, if I can click properly, do it that way. And then we should be able to just come over here and pop another missile. Bit of a waste of a missile though. You don't think the uh, anti ballistic is actually so expensive. Didn't fire at all. What's up with that? That's not what I wanted to do. Target is too close. Okay, so this is where we Google things. So let's come over here. Uh, Voltswiki would be the best way to do this. Because Voltswiki still has some decent information on it. I need to clone down the that entire Wiki here later. Um, which, by the way, for those who go, oh, you don't have the rights to download it. I helped create the Wiki, and to be honest, I think I'm the one that actually has full ownership of it. The problem of of this is, is I know somebody else actually does own this Wiki, and I don't know how the rights and the information works. Um, that being said, we're not going to just flat clone it because the new version of ICBM is not close enough to this, but this still has a lot of the old stuff in here. For example, we still have the old battery boxes in here. Yeah, the old uh, Basic Industries Cube. The old uh, wrench. I think I still have the wrench model laying around or somewhere. Okay, but we want ICBM. We want the anti-ballistic one, which I don't see it in here. Yeah, this Wiki doesn't seem to be updated. Here's electrical expansion. I don't remember what that mod even is. Crawl, yeah, this is the one that was Alex Hawk was working on. Uh, it added a whole bunch of transformers and stuff. We ended up actually putting the transformers in the resonant induction down the road. But it was a cool mod. I mean, I kind of wish he kept up with it. He was uh, he was heading in the right direction with it. Uh, there's fluid mechanics, my old mod. Uh, so I don't see the information I'm looking for. Uh, do we get the radar in here? It's a oh, it's blast craft. I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Uh, so there's a radar station. So, radar station is machine used, etc., etc. Yeah, I don't think the alarm part works anymore. Hmm. What we could just simply do, if I can figure this out, is we could just target the missile. I don't, we haven't tried that yet. It's pretty sad when I don't actually understand my own mod. <laughs> uh, I didn't write most of this code. Most of this was written by Calclavia, and I just maintained it for the longest time. Um... So let's see, we just pop this guy on here and uh, see if we get some magic. Oh, we got some. Oh, it worked. I don't know about you guys, but that actually worked. Now, what we might want to do is improve the mechanics of it a little bit here. Um, so instead of having to require redstone connection for the, uh, the launchers, we may be able to just do an autonomous trigger system. Because as you notice, I had to sit here and I had to tell it to target a location over here, which 
not too broken, but eh, it works. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and fix it in a moment, but I'll keep it in mind that it does need some improvement and does need more work. Uh, particularly, I need to implement the new model for, or implement the old model for the radar station. And then I'm probably just going to turn this into a connector, and then you'll connect this to multiple radar towers. Uh, I'll toy with it. Anyways, that's the end of this video, and I'll see you guys later.